Hi friends, I'm Maz Aftab from Easy Approach and in this video I'm gonna talk about animations. And as you know, animation is one of the coolest features in Flutter. Flutter provides 60 frames per second. It draws 60 frames in one second. So it means a smooth animation and no junky experience. And it's been said that fast application is great, but a smooth application is even better but there are a lot of different ways to making animations so which one to go with animation in flutter is categorized into different animations the first one is implicit animation and the other one is explicit animation however in this video we are just going to discuss implicit animations as this is the basics and the easiest way to make animation it's kind of like high level API for making animations. So it means no animation controller and easy and lesser code. Some of the examples of implicit animation are the use of these widgets provided by Flutter to animate things. So don't worry because we are going to implement most of them in the same video. But the question is when to use implicit animation. So there are some questions you gotta ask yourself while choosing implicit animation. Like the first question is if you are going to animate only one widget. If yes, then you can go to the next question. Which is if your animation is not repeatable. It means it starts and it stops. It may start again on some event, but it will not be in loop. So if yes, then you gotta ask the last question, which is if your animation is continuous. For this, say we have a box that's continuously expanding. So this is continuous animation as the values on which its size depends is continuously increasing in a particular direction. Similarly, say we have a box that's continuously shrinking. So it's also the example of continuous animation. Conversely, if we have a box that's expanding and shrinking, expanding and shrinking, then it is discontinuous animation. So if you got all yes, then it's the time to implement implicit animation. So now we are going to implement some of the examples of implicit animation. So far, we just have a container and we have given some weight and height and a color as well. And it's also wrapped inside the center widget so that we can see it at center. And we also have a floating action button and inside it, we will perform or we will trigger the animation. Now say what I want to do, I want to change the size of this container when the user would tap on this floating action button. So for this, what I'm doing, I'm first making the width and height variable. So let's make a variable. So it will be width. And the initial width would be 200. And same with the height, it would be 300. And now instead of giving here the constant value, we can give your weight and we can give your height. And now for changing the weight and height on tap event, what we can do inside the on press, we can call set state and inside the set state, we can change the value of weight. Now what I'm doing, I'm first checking what is the current value of weight. So if it is 200, then we can change it to 300 else change it to 200 and same with the height so for the height if the height is 300 then change it to 200 else change it to 300 and now let's run the application again and let's tap on it so you can see the size of the container or this box is changing. However, this is not what we want. We want to make this change in an animated way. So for this, we can use implicit animation. And there is a little change that we have to do in order to make this animated. So what we can do, we can make this ordinary container 
an animated container. And after this, you gotta define the duration, the time that this animation would take to be completed. So I'm, I'm just giving one second and that's it. Now let's refresh this. Now let's step on it. And you can see this is now changing the size of the container but in an animated way. And you can see the smoothness of the animation. Let's try to decrease some duration. Let's make it a millisecond and let's give it 700 or maybe 600. Now let's refresh it. And now you can see it more faster. And for making this animation more realistic, what we can do, we can also give the animation curve. So if I give the bouncing curve that is bounce out, then it will show the bouncy effect while animating. So let's restart the application. And if I tap on it, you can see now it is animating, but in some bouncing effect. So there are a lot of different curves that you can use and play with. So if I choose ease in linear. So you can see it's now a little more smooth. And in an animated container, you cannot just change height and width. You can change anything you want. Like say if I want to change the color as well. What I can do, I can first make a variable of color and initially I can give it red and instead of giving here the constant color, we can give here the reference of the variable that we have just made and at the last inside the on press, we can switch the color. So we can write here color and firstly, we can check if the color is red then change it to purple or anything you want but if it is not red then change it to red now if i restart the application and tap on it so you can see it's changing the size as well as the color So how great and simple is that? We have just uh, changed it to animated container and we have given the duration and that's all. And you can change any property and this will be changed in an animated way. And you can see also that we haven't used any animation controller inside this animated container. So that's also the beauty of implicit animation widgets. Now I'm going to try another one that is called animated opacity. And what I can do inside it, I can make a child, say a container having weight 200, high 200, and let's give the color as well. And we can give the changeable opacity inside the animated opacity. So for this, what I'm doing, I'm making another variable. So let's give it opacity. And initially I'm making it 20%. And I have to give the reference of opacity over here. And then what I can do for now, I can just comment all these and I can just change the value of opacity inside the set state. So let's make it 100%. Or maybe we can switch the values of opacity. For this, we first have to compare if the opacity is 20%, then we can switch it to 100%. Uh, and if it is already 100%, then we can switch back to 20 percent okay now let's refresh this and let's tap on it so you can see uh, the initial opacity is 20 percent because we have set it to 0 0.2 initially and if i taps on it you can see it's animating and we have another great widget that I love most, which is animated crossfade. 
animated crossfade can be used to switch between two different scenes or between two different widgets. So what I'm doing, I'm removing everything and I'm giving here animated crossfade. And inside it, we got to define two different scenes. So we have to define first child and let's make a container and let's give some height and width. So we can give height 200 and we can give width 350 and let's give some color like uh, red. And let's define the second scene, which is second child. So we can give the same container with different properties, like we can change the color of it. Maybe to blue and we can change the values of height and width. So let's make it a little smaller. And keep in mind, while you are working with implicit animation widgets, you always have to use duration. So let's give the duration of one second. And we have to define the crossfade estate, what scene you want to show. So for this, what I'm doing, because this is dynamic, we can change anytime. So I'm making a variable of crossfade estate. And let's give it a state. And initially I want to show the first scene so we can do first show first and over here we can give the state and for changing it what we can do inside the on press first let's comment this thing and inside the on press we can switch the state so for switching the state first we can compare if it is show first so if it is show first we can make it show second else we can make it show first now let's restart the application you can see as i have given first container as a red one so you can see the red container now if i tap on it you can see now it is changing into the second scene or it is switching back to the second scene And inside it, we can again give the curve. Or we can even define curve for both. So let's give the curve. And for this, let's uh, make a uh, bounce out. Now let's refresh it. So we can try another one and let's give same to the second curve and we can also give the size curve to make the changes in the size more realistic so here we can give bounce one bounce out actually and now let's refresh it So now you can see the scenes are changing and their sizes are changing in, in kind of a bouncing effect. And it's uh, now more better because uh, the sizes are changing pretty smoothly. So these are a few of the examples from the implicit animated widgets. So if you want to explore more, what we, you can do, you can write animated and after it you can see animated opacity, animated size, align, container, crossfade, default tags, icon, there are a lot of different things you can see and you can try. However, if you don't find any widget that's actually fulfilling your requirement, then we can make our customized animated widget. So at the last in this video, we are going to discuss another widget that is that can be used in implicit animation so that is actually tween animation builder so by using this tween animation builder you can make any customized animation widget so firstly inside this you gotta give the tween object and say if i want to change the size of the object that's inside this animation builder 
So what I can do, I can give a tween of double. However, changing the size of the object is not what you really want to do with this tween animation builder. Because you can do it even with animated container, animated size and I think there are a lot of more widgets but just for the sake of example. Now inside the tween object, you gotta specify where to begin and where to end. So for the beginning, the size would be zero. And for the ending, what I'm doing, I'm making a variable. Let's make it target variable or target value. And let's make this uh, say 40. So we got to give it 40 here or target value. Sorry. Now what this tween does, it generates the value from the beginning to the end by interpolating between this range. And all the interpolated values that will be always changeable would be used by the widget that will be inside this tween animation builder so that we can see the animation. So now firstly we have to specify the duration. Let's make it 500 millisecond. And now we gotta give the builder. So first of all here we have the context and then we have the size that that's actually the interpolated values and at the last we have the child it's actually for making it efficient but we are not going to use this one so we can just make it uh, underscore and inside it we can use anything uh, let's make the icon button and let's give the icon size to this value and let's give the icon So you can select anything. And what I'm doing in inside the on press of this uh, button, I can change the value of this target value. So let's first call the set state. And inside it, we can switch the value of target value. So if the target value is 40, we can make it uh, say 80 else we can make it 40 and now let's restart the application so you can see we have a button and if i tap on it you can see now it is a little bigger in size and now if i tap in, if tap on it again it's now smaller so you can see the value is the size is uh, always changeable. So how it works. So whenever the target value is changed, this builder is gets, uh, this builder gets called again. So whenever there is a change in the value of target value, so this will be redrawn on the screen. So I think this is it. And now you can explore some more implicit animation widgets by yourself and you can make something great and you can share with us as well. So this is it from this video. In this video, we have discussed implicit animation. And in the next video, we will also cover the explicit animation and some low level animation. So this is it from this video. If you like the video, please give a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe my channel and share the videos with those who want to learn Flutter with easy approach. So thank you for watching.